Gustavo. Is it well, okay? hello, everybody. This is Gustavo Tolosa here from Dallas, Texas, and we are live on the internet. And tonight is a very exciting night because um, I've been asking Chef AJ to do uh, this live webinar for uh, Anything Goes. And everybody here can ask any question you want, actually. I set up the webinar in a way so that you all could submit questions ahead of time and we could eliminate uh, repeated questions. So I have looked at uh, many of them. Then Chef AJ is answering them. They're all a surprise to her. So she has them prepared and she's really excited. And I'm welcoming you, Chef AJ. Thank you for being here from LA. Well, thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We both are wearing blue. What are the chances that we both? Are <laughs> we did not coordinate nope. this. Not at all. Very good. So this is how the evening is going to go. Where I can see that a lot of people are um, logging in. So we're just going to give a few minutes, and um, we'll just. Uh, I have lots of questions here. Actually, more than two hundred questions have been submitted. Uh, wow. Of course, we will not be able to cover all of them, but don't worry because we're going to try to do um, a question and answer session, uh, hopefully once a month. So if your question doesn't get answered tonight, it will get answered the next time. And um, I think that... Gustavo, that's, somebody said cute top. Do they mean my top or your Of top? course, yours. That's <laughs> not cute. <laughs> it thanks, is. Thanks for your help. Loves me too. Can you believe everybody? Chef AJ here is not wearing any makeup and her skin looks great. Well, so, of course, it's due to the plant based yeah. uh, you know, center. I, people ask me a lot, and I purposely didn't. You know, I, I'll be honest, I have lipstick. So, I mean, I, I don't. A really little, a little. Yeah. It's, just, it's really a moisturizer more than that. People say to me all the time, Oh, your skin is so beautiful. What kind of makeup, what kind of skincare do you use? And the truth is, is unless you're coming somewhere to see me speak in person, I don't wear makeup. I don't like it because I'm at the gym almost every day and I sweat and I just don't like the feeling of makeup. I do wear it, you know, professionally, obviously on my TV show. And the truth is, is up until very recently, I didn't have a skincare routine because I believe that the produce is your is your makeup you know fruits and vegetables and what make my skin if you think it looks good look good you can't just buy a product or have some kind of surgery if you're not eating well so eating well is the most important thing to do first in eating things that are high in antioxidants specifically fruits and vegetables all the colors of the rainbow things like that and my mom and grandma they might have had heart disease and diabetes but they had perfect skin and I think one of the reasons is is my mom and my grandma never wore makeup except for lipstick and they didn't have a single wrinkle and all they used was soap and water so up until recently, I never had a skincare routine. And then I was at this PCRM leadership conference where they used my recipes. This was, I believe, in uh, February, or maybe it was January. And I met this woman, Cheryl Greenberg, who set, used to set up events in Arizona, the Healthy You events. And I knew her by email, but in person. And I saw her, I said, oh my God, you have the most gorgeous skin. And she said, this is why. So she sent me these vegan products. They're made by K-A-E-L-E-N-H-A-R-W-E-L-L, Kayleen Harwell or Kaylin, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. And this is the Peachy Clean Cleanser. And I'm not getting anything for telling you this other than it's an amazing product. All the products she sent me were amazing, but this one is my favorite because it smells it smells like peach ice cream. And uh, check check her out. Her website is the name www. I can't read. All I need glasses. K A E L E N H A R W E L L. Sharon McRae, who's the beauty editor for Vegan, uh, the the online vegan magazine Veg World, uh, is going to be doing a review of these products. If you want to find more about them, but um, you know, no product will help you if your diet is not right. Just so you know, so get the diet right first, and then use the makeup and the skincare as a as an adjunct to your inner beauty. Right, the skin comes from inside, right? Right. Well, the skin's the largest organ in the body, and it's like, that's why when people, you know, people say, "Well, oil's, you know, not bad for you; it's not good for you." And 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 people with acne and things like that, the minute you stop all the high fat foods and the oil, I mean, your skin clears. Oh, of course, the animal products, assuming you're not already eating dairy and things like that, but your skin—it's such a difference when you're not eating oil. People's skin. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, Chef AJ, how about if we just jump right in and sure. start the questions? Okay. Yes. So these are questions, everybody, that you have submitted. 
I know that some of you are going to type questions here on in the chat. I'll try to get to some of them, but we will give priority to those of you who actually took the time to fill out the survey and to submit the oh, questions. Yeah. Uh, I just saw a question. How many potatoes do you actually eat every day? <laughs> At least that. many. I don't go by number. Oh, Kay, uh, Kaylin Johnson is on. Hello. She, she could type a little bit about her product. I don't, I don't, count how many potatoes but i'd say at least this many this one probably weighs two pounds this pound probably weighs a pound and a half so i don't count how many potatoes i just eat as many as i eat you know as i don't many as needed yeah i mean i just you know, that's how hungry i am too but I, right. a lot, i'll eat a lot of potatoes never be afraid of potatoes they're what make you thin and they're what make you healthy don't measure food because you don't measure how many breaths you take a day and that's kind of the same instinct right. hunger is. We Absolutely. eat until we're full, and then when we're hungry, we eat again. That's right. If you're eating the right food, there is never a need to weigh and measure. Exactly. Okay, so here we go with the first question. Um, this is submitted by Jackie, and it's, when deciding what to eat, what criteria do you use? That's actually a great question, Jackie, because when I give my lecture on PowerPoint, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, I actually go through my criteria. So my first criterion, is it from a plant or is it from an animal? If it's from an animal, I'm not going to eat it no matter what. I'm going into my 40th year now of following a vegan diet. So is it from a plant? But then is it a whole plant or is it manufactured in a plant? Because I'm not going to eat vegan junk food and I'm not going to eat processed food. So that's number two. And then number three would be is the fiber and the water intact. Because there are some healthy foods that are from plants, but they've had the fiber or the water removed or disrupted. So I'm not going to have juicing, which removes the fiber and the pulp, the most important part of the whole food. I'm probably not going to have smoothies except as an occasional treat because the the, five, the bulk has been so greatly reduced. And I'm not going to eat dried fruit except maybe as an occasional condiment to something because the water's been removed. So is it from a plant? Is it whole? And is the fiber and water intact? And if I can answer yes to all those three questions, I eat it. And I eat it as much as I want. <laughs> Very good. Great answer. Um, Chef AJ, um, while well, he says here, you look radiant. Oh, besides, <laughs> besides eating um, SOS nutrient dense diet, what do you do for your skin care? I guess you have answered. Well, now just I'm using this these new products that that Cheryl Greenberg was so generous to send me, and I'm loving them. And I'll be honest, up until then, I had no skincare routine um, except for eating lots and lots of fruits and vegetables, especially vegetables. Right. Very good. Yeah, instead um, of putting the cucumber on my eye, I put <laughs> my mouth and I eat it. <laughs> we eat it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here's a question that is a little bit long, but let's see what it is. I was wondering if you could address the mantra of the uh, whole food plant-based advocates who state that on that diet, you can eat as much as you like and not need to worry about counting calories or gaining weight. In your own interview in Healthy Girls Kitchen from 2013, you described how you basically subsisted on some greens in the morning, a potato of sorts, and leftover salad for the day. From the day, uh, let's see what else she says. This is, this is a long question. I wouldn't say I subsisted. I eat, I eat all the right. potatoes I want, all the rice, all the beans, all the fruits, and all the vegetables I want. I eat a style following the principles of calorie density, eating ad libitum. And I don't believe that these plant-based doctors are saying you can eat all you want of every single kind of plant food. So you need to be more specific and tell me who's saying that. But I'm going by the scientific research. It was done by Dr. Barbara Rolls. And if you follow my podcast, she was actually the last one that I just interviewed. It's on my uh, website now, Healthy Taste Online. And Dr. Rolls do, has done more research on the subject of calorie density, which simply means calories per pound of food than any other human being. She has a laboratory at Penn State University where she studies human eating behavior. And she discovered that if you keep the average calorie density per day of the food you eat to 567 calories per pound, you absolutely cannot gain weight. You can't. Human beings eat the same amount of food per day. Now, that doesn't mean that I eat the same amount as Gustavo or some NFL running back, but most people eat approximately three to five pounds of food per day. And if you follow the principles of calorie density, eating foods in order of increasing calorie density with the most calorie dilute foods first, eating foods with their water and fiber intact, you can eat ad libitum as much as you want, as often as you want, whenever you, you want until comfortably full. That's a key word there. Nobody is supposed to gorge themselves 
eat when not hungry or eat past the point of fullness, but what foods are at a calorie density of 567 per pounds or less? Well, there's fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. So if you're eating animal products, processed foods, or high-fat foods like nuts, seeds, and avocado, then your calorie density isn't 567 per pound or less. It's higher, so then you cannot eat ad libitum. And so what people do is they like the concept of eating ad libitum, but then they want to include these concentrated foods that weren't found in nature, and then you can't have it both ways. So if you want to eat animal products and processed food, which have a calorie density of you know, higher than 567 per pound, then you are going to have to weigh and measure your food and do portion control. You know, there's thousands, probably millions of species on the planet. And in the history of the world, only three have ever been overweight. The animals are the cat, the domesticated cats, domesticated dogs, and humans. And that's because they're not eating the diet consistent with their species natural history. None of our ancestors were ever overweight or obese. And until the beginning of processed food, humans weren't either. And so, you know, if you take a look at the people like the low fat raw vegans, people that follow Dr. Doug Graham, the 80, 10, 10 diet or fruitarians, they're keeping the average calorie density of their food per day to 300 calories per pound or less eating only fruits and vegetables. You have to lose weight at that calorie density. These are the leanest people on the planet. Now, I'm not advocating you just eat fruits and vegetables. And so the thing is, is if you can't eat at limitum, that's you're either really, really overeating for emotional readings or you're really eating past the past fullness or you're including foods of a higher calorie density. You're including the nuts and the seeds and the avocado and the bread and the flour and the pasta and the sugar and the oil. You're eating out at restaurants. It's sneaking in. You're putting salt in your food, which is causing you to overeat. And so, yes, you can absolutely eat up living them. I mean, there is no, like, I love how Dr. Doug Lyle says that there is no, you know, gazelle on the African savanna worried about if he's eating one blade of grass or two. We are not meant to uh, use scales, either the ones we stand on or the ones we weigh our food on. It is not normal. It is not natural. I don't think it's sustainable, and I don't think it works. What do you think, Gustavo? Do you weigh and measure your food? <laughs> You've lost 80 pounds. Did you have to weigh and measure anything? Nothing. No, no, right. no. So right. it's it's true, but um, you do have to eat enough t starch, which Absolutely. until, until that got thing. in my head, really, yes. uh, it didn't work. If you don't eat enough starch, you will not have satiation. People think, oh, if I don't eat fats, I won't be satiating. Fat is the least satiating micronutrient. If you are not eating enough starch, either in the form of potatoes, sweet potatoes, winter squash, rice or beans, or some combination, you will be hungry. And when you're hungry, you will overeat, and generally on the wrong foods. So without starch, there's no satiation. You can't gain weight eating carbohydrates. It, it, there's, it's a thing called de novo lipogenesis. Pigs can do it. You Human beings can't convert protein or carbohydrate to fat. You can't do it. It's not possible. So, you know, read the McDougall program for maximum weight loss if you want the ac actual scientific research article that explains that. But when you eat dietary fat, it takes less than 3% of the calories in the dietary fat to be stored as body fat. So hence the fat you eat is the fat you wear. You can't store excess potatoes, even if you eat an extra potato as fat, because what happens is it gets burned as heat, escaping through the top of the head or through the fidget factor, or it gets stored invisibly in the muscles of the liver as glycogen. So yes, you can eat all you want ad libitum if you're eating the right food. And those foods are fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes without the addition of chemicals like sugar, oil, and salt. You do that, and you can fill this tank two to five times a day, depending on your activity level. If you don't believe me, go to True North, because I didn't believe it either, because I went there 50 pounds heavier at 165 pounds five years ago, and I saw all the 30 people that worked there, the doctors that were in their 50s and 60s, and all the staff come into the dining room three times a day with dinner plates bigger than I've ever seen at home, and taking not one, but two plates, and doing this three times a day, and I'm like, I how is this possible? Well, and that's when I did that. That's the one I lost weight, is by doing that uh, ad libitum meeting. Very good. Uh, let me just do a quick uh, interruption here. Um, technology is still in these baby steps, even though we're, you know, we have a lot of advance in the in, in internet now. So, uh, I see people saying that some of you um, hear echoes and the sound is not so good. Remember that. All of this depends on the speed of the internet that you have and if there are other connections in your home, if there are other people using it. So it's not perfect. We, we know it's not perfect. Uh, if you have to uh, disconnect and then connect again, and sometimes that uh, improves a little. But um, um, from our end, it looks and it sounds fine. So uh, let's see if you can try that. So anyway, here we have... 
Gustavo, somebody named Cindy says she allows her a potato every other day. I mean, that's so sad. Why would you allow yourself a food that people have lived on for an entire year without any nutritional deficiencies? I mean, that is so sad. She, you are in a self-imposed jail. Eat potatoes. Look at look at the website uh, of Chris Voigt, 20 Potatoes a Day, how all he ate was potatoes and reversed his diabetes and high blood pressure and went off his medication. You know, and if you don't want to eat white potatoes, you don't have to. You can eat sweet potatoes. Those are my favorite. Yeah, remember that it's uh, the problem is what people put on the potatoes, not the potato itself. No, right. Yeah, but anyway. Okay, so here we have another question. Do you have an antidote for eating mindlessly? Uh, yeah, eat mindfully. So number one, do not eat in the car. Do not eat in front of the computer. Do not eat in front of the television, talking on the phone, doing other things. There's some wonderful books I've read about mindful eating and just – you know, you get videos free on YouTube about them, but 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 eat mindfully. You know, sit down with a plate. Don't eat over the sink, and eat without distraction. And I know it's hard. I I mean, I don't always eat mindfully. I'll be honest. And uh, you know, you end up eating more when you're not mindful. That's for sure. That's you know, I think even having a, a meal in silence, you know, is is great. You know, a lot of monks, a lot of spiritual people, even though they may share food, they eat in silence. I think when we talk and when we converse, we're, we're eating more. We are eating mindlessly, and and it, we don't chew our food well, and we often get bloated or indigestion. So the antidote for mindless is mindful, and just you know, take some time to sit down and nourish your body. Right. How about? Um some people are still confused about fat. And of course, I have a few questions about people asking, how much fat am I supposed to eat every day? What do you say to that? Well, you know, it just depends who you listen to. So I personally listen to Dr. John McDougall and Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr. And Dr. McDougall has been saying for 40 years, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And until I listened to him, I was fat. Now, obviously we need fat, but do we need added fat? Well, you know, there's fat in everything. Oats, for example, have almost 20% of their calories from fat. Greens have 3% of their calories from fat. And here's the thing. If you have fat on your body anywhere, you have fat. So you're not going to become fatty acid deficient in, say, 21 or 30 days following a no added fat diet. Now, I haven't added any fat to my diet since January 2nd, 2012. I'm doing, as Dr. Lyle says, I'm doing an experiment. And so far, it's working for me. And I have to realize that I'm a food addict, or at least my brain is still one of a food addict, even though I'm in recovery. And if I eat the smallest amount of fat, I'm so sensitive to it, it just makes me want to eat more fat. And so I tried reintroducing nuts, you know, a Brazil nut a day, because I don't even like Brazil nuts, but I hear they're good for you for selenium. And just after one Brazil nut, all I kept thinking about, where are the pistachios? Where are all the other high fat foods? So if you're worried about the omega-3 fatty acids, for example, you could certainly have a tablespoon of ground flaxseed in your oatmeal or on your salad or, or chia seeds or hemp seeds. What I like to do is now instead of almond milk, I like to make hemp milk, which Sharon McRae taught me how to make. You just take a tablespoon of hemp seeds, which are very affordable at Costco with a cup of water in the blender, very creamy. And so I'm getting some omegas that way if you're worried. But you don't need that much fat. If you read the best-selling Forks Over Knives book by Dr. Day and Letterman, they talk about the, how the amount we actually need is very, very small. Also, you can get your omega-3 fatty acid levels tested in your blood. I did that. Mine were fine. I also eat a lot of greens and something called purslane, which is very, very high in omega-3 fatty acids. But, you know, here's the thing. I know all this research is coming out now. We're nuts, you know, or everybody thinks it's like there's these miracle food. Um, I can't eat them, you know. I mean, they, they're a trigger food for me. They make me, well, first of all, they made me fat. Or at least they didn't. They made it so that I could not lose weight. Uh, you know, if you're worried, there's all, True North sells a DHA supplement. If people really feel they're, you know, that they need some of that without having that, but I go with Dr. McDougall. I mean, it's been working for him for this long, and you know, so far it's been working for me. And if I did go back to eating fat, then I would probably do flax seeds and chia seeds because I don't think people gorge on seeds the way they do nuts. I don't think they're, you know, I, they're not very delicious. At least flax seed, uh, chia seeds are great for in recipes thickening. You can make puddings and, and, and you can bake with flax seeds, things like that. So, you know, here's I, what I would say to you is do what, what, I, what was suggested to me by Doug Lyle is run an experiment for 30 days. Do a no added fat diet. See how you feel. See if you lose weight. If you're not overweight, then it doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter. I mean, you still want to eat your fruits and vegetables, but you can eat more nuts and seeds. You can eat more fat. 
you know, obviously, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it's as important as people are making it, especially if you're overweight. If you're overweight, you have fat on your body. You're not going to become fatty acid deficient in, you know, in a month of not eating nuts and seeds every day. I know that for me, even weighing and measuring my nuts one ounce a day, I couldn't lose any weight until I stopped adding all fat. And you know, it's hard, Gustavo, because the foods at a higher caloric density, the nuts and the seeds and the oils, well, these are foods that produce more dopamine in the brain. And that's why people really like them. It isn't just because of their taste, because oil really has no taste and actually tastes kind of bad. And if you use oil, you need to use more salt. That's why they like these high fat foods, because they're stressed. They don't exercise. Many are born with what's called low D2 receptivity. So they're looking to medicate with food. And you know, even though all eating stimulates the production of dopamine in the brain, you know, kale at 100 calories a pound isn't going to stimulate the same amount of dopamine as, as you know, walnuts at 3,000 calories a pound or oil at 4,000 calories a pound. So really, that is why they like high-fat foods so much. And that's the thing. But once you stop eating them, you learn to enjoy the whole natural food without the fat. Your taste buds adjust, your brain chemistry adjusts, and then all you need to be happy is this. Yeah, yeah, that's what we have. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
pasta and bread allowed and you really don't do right don't so, so what i mean is in in the in the see so here's the thing Start Solution is one book, and the McDougal Program for Maximum Weight Loss is another book. That was a best-selling book that I believe is still a best-selling book written in 1985. That's the book that I follow, that we follow in Ultimate Weight Loss. Start Solution, of course, allows things like bread and chocolate. And cho He's not telling you to, ju I mean, to just eat bread and chocolate and sugar and salt and flour, but those things are allowed on the more liberal program. And those are fine for those. Those are, foods are fine. People still can reverse their heart disease and other diseases with them. But they are more calorically dense. But they don't work for the food addict because sugar and flour are go through the exact same refining process as drugs and alcohol. And they are much more calorically dense than eating the whole food. Right. Right. Okay. Can you comment a little bit on the elimination diet? Some people are asking. Yeah. Well, Dr. McDougall has one on his website, but you know, I get this question a lot about bloating, especially for people that have just started uh, doing vegetables or vegetables for breakfast. And you know, I'm, first of all, I'm not a doctor, so if you ask, you know, doctory things, I, I'm just going to refer you to Dr. McDougall, or you can uh, Dr. Goldhammer does free 20 minute consults if you go to healthpromoting.com and fill out the online form. But I know I had a lot of digestive issues myself, and so what, basically, what an elimination diet is is eliminating everything except from very simple foods that are almost never a problem for people feeds like sweet potatoes or rice and you can live on these foods for a while and and you know maybe some very simple like that if you're going to add a vegetable something like really benign like zucchini but you could live on potatoes you know for a week a month people have done it for a year or or sweet potatoes i mean would be the best because but check out dr mcdougall's website because he has the elimination diet so you go on the elimination diet and i don't know if i get a few recommends for like three weeks or a month and then what you do is you slowly add one food at a time you keep a very very accurate food journal with your symptoms if you bloat or if you have abdominal pain or diarrhea and you do this and you know because i've had all this allergy testing and at the end of the day even the immunologist says the proof of the pudding is in the eating and that's you do that and i think that's even better than the testing that you can receive and it's it, it can be very very valuable the other thing i want to say is gustavo people you know you had a question earlier about mindless eating people don't chew their food people are eating with distraction and you can't go from the standard american diet or the junk food version of the vegan diet which requires no chewing i mean think about it uh, chicken nuggets cinnabon you know bread these are foods you could practically swallow whole and then if you start eating things like beans and vegetables, well, people have lost their ability to chew from eating 92% of their calories from animal products and processed food. There's vegans that eat 100% of their calories from vegan processed food. Dr. Clapper talks about how you have to chew your food to a cream. Chew, chew, chew. That sometimes alleviates some of these problems. And things like beans or vegetables, especially if you're not used to them, you need to build up. You can't go from eating a junk food diet to then eating a pound of vegetables for breakfast. You have to build it up slowly and so you can you, and also I find that if you cook things it often helps break them down a little bit you know for weight loss raw is better than cook but the thing is it's much easier to digest cooked vegetables than raw vegetables but you really do have to cook excuse me you have to chew you have to chew really 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 well because these are things that are very cruciferous they're very they're, they're very fibrous. The other thing is, is realize, you know, people say, well, I can't eat, you know, kale because high in oxalates or I can't eat this or I can't eat that. You know, if you Google non-starchy vegetables, you'll get probably 50 vegetables. If you can't eat one vegetable, eat another vegetable. Vegetables vary in their degree of gas production. And so while it's true, some people have a problem with Brussels sprouts. I've never met anybody that couldn't eat steamed zucchini ever. I've just never met that person. That that is what one of the first things people eat after fasting at, at True North. So so find which ones work for you. But there's always something in one of these groups that will work for you. And people, I know that the the FODMAP diet is very popular for people with digestive disturbances. I tried to follow that, but man, it was just like trying to remember which foods were low <laughs> FODMAP and high FODMAP. I just did an elimination diet. I kept a journal. I figured out which foods worked for me, which didn't, and then you know. I, now I eat pretty much all fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and. Have you um, this is a personal question, but sure. no, not really personal. But have you ever gone camping? Yeah, actually, you want to hear something funny? When I went to culinary school, I could not afford 
like a, a hotel and it's, I camp the entire time. So yes, and it's uh, it's funny because Jewish people generally don't go camping. We like to make <laughs> reservations. There was no room service in my tent. I was very cold, but yeah, I, I, I it's not my favorite thing, honestly. I like a little bit more. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I can but, say that I have never gone camping. Yeah. I just I just asked you that because yeah. someone says, someone asked, uh, what would you suggest for a healthy vegan meal while you're camping? So. Well, you know what I would do is I would make, uh, this is what I would do is I would make hummus and I would dehydrate it. And then when I got to my campsite, I would rehydrate it with water. Uh, over a campfire, you could roast potatoes, you could roast vegetables. I would probably cook a lot in advance. If the campsite had electricity, I would bring my Instant Pot and problem solved. Right. Yeah, yeah. That, that would that would solve it. Very good. Absolutely. What is your favorite kitchen gadget? Oh, well, the Instant Pot, the pressure cooker, of course. I mean, I oh, use really? that every day, multiple times a day, you know. Right, right. Okay, very good. So let's see if we uh, another interesting question. Are all sugars the same or are some better than others? Well, I if you count, I, I don't consider fruit a sugar if it's a whole natural fruit. I don't even consider dates a sugar unless you make them into date sugar. So in my opinion, sugar is sugar, oil is oil, salt is salt. They're all bad, some are worse. And like Dr. Goldhammer always says, just because something is less bad doesn't make it health promoting. And so from a standpoint of you know treating food addiction, trying to overcome food addiction, it, they're all the same. Um, I do think though the fake ones are worse. And, and, and I put stevia in the category of fake ones like stevia, xylitol, erythritol, because the reason is, is they're zero calorie sweeteners. And when you have the zero calorie sweeteners, first of all, stevia, xylitol, and erythritol, the, le the stevia leaf is found in nature. And if somebody wanted to chew it for whatever reason, I probably guess that's okay. But what happens is most people using stevia are using the powders and the liquids, which go through the same refining process as the drugs and alcohol. And like the other fake sugars, like the xylitols and the erythritols, and first of all, they're more intensely sweet than anything found in nature. But what happens is you get no calorie reward. So the tips of the taste bud, the taste buds on the tip of the tongue for sugar and salt, they taste the sweet. And so the brain gets all excited thinking, wow, we're going to get some calories. We're going to get something good. But guess what? The calories never come. And so then the brain says, well, but I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> so the thing is, is the, the fake sugars like the stevia, xylitol, and erythritol, they actually perpetuate overeating. So I think those are probably worse than sugar, which I think sugar is one of the probably the worst one of the worst foods that there are now that said all sugars are still 1800 calories a pound so whether you want to call it barley malt or maple syrup or agave which is probably the, the worst like high fructose corn syrup or cane sugar or beet sugar doesn't matter you know it takes three feet of sugar cane to make one teaspoon of sugar Beets are about 100 calories a pound, but sugar is 1,800 calories a pound. So in my opinion, it's a fiberless food. It has no nutrients. So I, 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 even when I was fat, I didn't use sugar. I stopped using sugar, oil, salt on, my, on August 1st, 2008. So I think they're all bad. You know, people say, but coconut sugar. You know, can anybody here make sugar? I mean, I can, I can make date syrup and I can make date paste. I can take dates and blend them into a, a, a paste with, with some liquid or I can cook them down and I can make a syrup. That I can do. But even that, I think, is almost too concentrated. And as you... As your brain chemistry adjusts and you lose weight, dates even can sometimes become problematic for people that are food addicts because they're still 1,300 calories a pound. They're not a low-calorie food. They're still better for people, I believe, because they're high in fiber, even though 70% of their calories come from sugar. They're a whole natural food. So I'd much rather see people eat a dessert with a date if they're going to eat a dessert than use these fake sugars or real sugars. But but sugar is a problem. The problem is the more you eat it, the more you want it. And, uh, you know, uh, it's it's... The, the, the more I stay away from it, the, the less I, I crave it, the less I even like right. it. And I much would rather eat savory things now. And the thing is, is once you stop eating sugar and you eat a Japanese sweet potato or Hawaiian sweet potato and you roast this, this is ice cream. This is oh, dessert. It's this very is sweet. It's almost too <laughs> I mean, sweet sometimes. You don't need sugar when you're eating food like this. This is, this is, this is, this is all you need. Right. You know, I, I stopped using sh sugar or any kind of syrup on my oatmeal when I uh, saw you make uh, a dessert with dates. And now I just put two or three dates right. and, it's, and it's sweet enough for me. Right. But of course, I can't put dates in a, in a, in, in hot tea or anything like that. So. Right. You, you know, you can't, but you could soak dates in water. And use that water to make your tea or you make your oatmeal. That's that's oh, another way cool. to do that. You know, All yeah. Right. So I'd much rather see people have dates. At least they're getting fiber and they're they're At eating. Least they're getting, yeah. You know, and if they're not a trigger for you, but don't eat anything that's a trigger for you, even if it's a whole natural food. 
Exactly. Some people have problem with bananas, believe it or not. Um, so someone is asking, and I think this is a really good question, actually. When it, let's say that someone is switching from a, from the standard American diet uh, to eating this way, uh, how long does it take for a person to see the pounds start to drop? Well, most people, if they go to a place in Santa Rosa, like the McDougal 10-day program or True North Health, most people lose about two pounds a week if they're a woman and three pounds a week if they're a man. And also depends how much weight somebody has to lose because if somebody has 10 pounds to lose, they're going to lose weight a lot slower than somebody that has 100 pounds to lose. You know, people think, people that meet me now think, oh, wow, she's skinny. Well, you know, it took me 27 months to lose 47 pounds. It, I lost about a pound a week at first. I'm hypothyroid. It's not like it just poured off, uh, but it, you know, came off slowly. But I, I didn't care. I mean, I wasn't in a race, you know, I was in a race to, to I wasn't in a race. I was trying to uh, heal my brain chemistry from years of abuse from sugar and flour and all those kind of foods. And, and so it wasn't like I was, you know, in a hurry to, to lose a certain amount of weight. But I, I mean, I had no idea that my body was actually going to release this much weight because the truth is, is after I had lost the first 20 pounds and went from a 14 to a 10, I remember running into Brian Wendell, the executive producer of Forks Over Knives at a fundraiser said you look great and I'm like I thought I looked great too I thought I was done I had no idea that if I kept eating this way this would happen but I didn't have a scale and so many people in ultimate weight loss are using the scale to measure their progress and their self-worth and one of our most successful uh, members shade up seven months without losing weight but her body was changing on the inside and the outside and her clothes were getting smaller so I think the scale is a very inaccurate uh, judge of your progress uh, if you're eating the food right, you will you will lose weight. You, I mean, you really will. And so that's why I think it's really important for people to keep food journals. You know, people that write down what they eat lose 50% more weight than people that don't. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so, uh, you know, you, you, most people will lose about two pounds a week. And even if, so, even if you lost a pound a week, that's that's 50 pounds a year. Who cares? Right, you know. Right. I lost. I was losing three pounds a week, so that's, that's about better. 12, yeah. uh, 10 to 12 pounds a month. But I had. I, I, I understood that I had to eat as much starch as I needed or wanted yeah. and no oil, but like zero oh, oil. Right, yeah. right. So, um, okay, another question is uh, soy, I, I, I haven't ever never seen them or eaten them, but soy curls, are they um, yeah, I, well, whole food? So, uh, no, I don't believe so because how could they be a whole food found in nature when they're, they're <laughs> right. like, you get it at the Adventist bookstore in a bag. So I have nothing against soy. I think soy in the whole food form can be a healthy food if you have some edamame, maybe a little tofu and tempeh. It's a high fat food. It's over 50% fat, so it's not my favorite for weight loss. I'm allergic to soy, so I don't eat it. But soy curls are, they're, I, I think they're too processed. I don't recommend pastas for people that uh, suffer from food addiction, even the ones that are made from just beans or just lentils. I think those are the healthiest, though, that if you're going to eat pasta or serve it to the family, there are brands that you can get now at Whole Foods that are made from just lentils or just beans. But again, for people with food addiction, we need to eat our whole food whole and not eat the, the pastas. If you want to eat pasta, I think the healthiest pasta is to get a little spiralizer at Bed Bath & Beyond and make your zucchini pasta because what you really like is the sauce anyway. Right, right. So uh, this is a question that ha that comes up every, uh, many times, not only with you but with Dr. McDougall as well. What what do you say when someone has changed to a plant based uh, starch centered diet for three four years and now they have stopped losing weight and they still want to lose ten or fifteen more pounds? How so, how can they do that? Well, so here's the thing, you know. I, are those vanity pounds or are those pounds you really, really need to lose? Because, you know, that's the thing. I, you know, if a person is healthy, if they are, the most important thing is that they're eating this food. And if they're really eating this food and they are re it, wanting to lose more weight, then you have to tighten the screws a little bit more. And there's ways to do that. But is it, is it, I don't know if it's always worth it for people. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if they, because if it's, if they're going by, how, if they look fine and everybody's telling them they look fine and they're just trying to go for some, you know, anorexic supermodel look because I, you know, that that's not a reason necessarily to, to force the body to be at a weight that's lower than it wants to be. I mean, I work with people in the entertainment industry that have to have that look in order to work. So we have to tighten the screws. 
<laughs> and what that means is we have to increase the amount of the vegetables and, and maybe decrease slightly the amount of starch, not to the point where they're not satisfied, but you just, you need to eat more of the lower calorie dense food and you need to eat it in order of calor caloric density. So instead of maybe cooking vegetables, this is a minor point, but vegetables are about 100 calories a pound raw, they're 200 cooked. So you may need to eat more vegetables raw. You, you, you need to eat way more vegetables. You want to eat them first, fill up the tank with those and then eat starch. Dr. Goldhammer's wife, Dr. Jennifer Morano, has an article on the True North website about intermittent fasting. And so what that is, is where you narrow the feeding window. It's not fasting like withholding food, but it's where you narrow the feeding window to about six hours a day. So in other words, it's like you wake up, you skip breakfast, you wait till about 12 o'clock, you eat lunch, and then you eat only through this window. So this is something that's been shown to help people lose weight. But I, I wouldn't do this as the first line of defense, you know. The other thing is, is look at other things like, are you moving your body at all? You know, are you exercising? Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping soundly? That can affect your ability to lose weight. So I wouldn't just do these things that are more extreme first. Like I would take your free consult with Dr. Goldhammer and look at your entire lifestyle first and see if there's other reasons to account for that 10 to 15 pounds. But a lot of these people, at least the women that think they need to lose 10 to 15 pounds really don't. And if your numbers are good and you feel good, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like we all have different body types. We're all different heights. And not everybody, I think, is designed to be super, super, super skinny. I, I know that for some reason as women, we are uh, taught that that is more desirable through images in the media. And um, it's, it's not. It's like, you know, you set yourself up for eating disorders. If I think if you can maintain a healthy weight, that's that's more important than struggling to get down to a number that may be so unrealistic and unsustainable for you that that's what i think um right okay um do you uh chef aj do you use um any thyroid replacement and if you yeah. do what kind do you use the, you know, the I was, uh, you know Dr. dr goldhammer says that um the reason vegans get headaches are from wearing their halos too tight and i was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and, but, but the, the good part of the story that i want to share because is that even being hypothyroid unmedicated, I still was able to lose all this weight. That's why probably it took me so long. So I had this thing in my head that I'm vegan and I don't need medicine. And so I wasn't going to take thyroid medicine and I was going to try natural things. Well, you know, what happened is, is I waited so long that I got very, very, very sick. And I ended up um, with the, I remember the exact date because uh, it was July 18th of 2000 and. 14 and I woke up one morning and my neck was this big and I could not swallow and uh, what happened was is I uh, basically it, it just you know I waited too long and I had grown a cover of blonde fur it wasn't hair it's called lanugo all over my face I, it was vanity that finally got me to take care of my thyroid but it was like a golden retriever and what happened is um, that that's what happened I waited too long I became iodine deficient it was painful it was you know, I had, I had, it was not good. So I guess I take 50 milligrams of levothyroxine. My numbers are within normal limits now. And uh, I don't think I'm going to address going off the medicine anytime soon. I may at, at some point, but I don't think it's uh, shameful to take medicine for something like this. Thyroid medicine is the most prescribed medicine in the world. And uh, Dr. Goldhammer believes there's a connection with Hashimoto's thyroiditis and gluten. Uh, so I, I don't, I haven't eaten gluten now in four years. Not that I was eating that much, but uh, that, he feels that's a contributing factor. So yes, I have that, and I do take that one medication. Okay, all right. What what three things would you recommend for those people who are just starting the plant based uh, world? Oh boy. Well, I, you know, I I guess number one would be watch the movie Forks Over Knives because um, not uh, is the China studies one of the most wonderful books, of course, but not everybody's going to sit down and read a book or even listen to a book on tape. But most people can find 87 minutes, go on Netflix and watch this documentary. So that's that's probably the first thing I would do. Uh, the second thing I would do is is consider giving up dairy permanently. That And I say that to everyone, whether they become vegan or not. That's the really most important change. And what's the third thing? Just eat more vegetables. I mean, that is really the answer to almost everything, you know, whether you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to have, you know, better looking skin, people don't eat vegetables, you know, and, you know, earlier the question was, what's in between the McDougal program? You know, what I, it, McDougal doesn't emphasize vegetables. He, he, 
thinks that they're more of a condiment. I, I think that uh, you could be certainly healthy without the amount of vegetables. I think people need to lose weight and be healthy, but they really, I think they do make a difference. I do think they make a difference in uh, your ability to lose weight and your ability to have, you know, beautiful skin. I, I remember, you know, Dr. Goldhammer, he, he's, he's a year older than me. And that guy has like unbelievable skin. That guy eats so many vegetables, you know? So eat vegetables. It's really good for you. Ooh, Gustavo, I can't hear you now. Gustavo. Oh, this means wait, huh? Just wait a second. Okay. okay yeah, that uh, means wait, sometimes you know? I turn off my microphone just so that it wouldn't have any, uh, in, uh, you know, echo. So uh, someone says here, I've never, okay, this is the first time I have to admit, uh, a lot of recipes call for sweet potatoes and I hate sweet potatoes. What can I substitute? Well, you know, the thing is, and then regular potatoes, russets, Yukon gold, red potatoes. I don't know how you can eat sweet potatoes. To me, that'd be like hating a puppy. Speaking of which, where is my puppy? Oh, Here's yes. Do we, have, do we have any questions for Bailey? <laughs> yeah, let me see, because Bailey okay, will be happy so. to answer questions. So I would say that you need, a, you know, another something. What, what would be like a, a sweet potato? I mean, I would say just a regular potato. Let's see. Look who we have here. Oh, there she is. Okay. I do want to make a public service announcement. Please go to your shelter. Don't breed and buy while homeless animals die. You know, over a thousand dogs and cats get put to death every week just in Los Angeles. But you guys can do something about it because when it's time for getting a new best friend, this little pup was bought at the ship. Bought. She was a bought. She was a doctor. <laughs> she was uh, four years old. I, I, I went in for a puppy, and John Pierre said that he would never talk to me again if I got a puppy to take home the oldest dog there. She was four. She's perfect. So, Please adapt. If anybody has questions for Bailey, she'd be happy to answer. <laughs> okay. You know, um, a lot of people have questions about oil, and I think yeah. that maybe you could say a, a few words uh, about that. Although, in a couple of weeks, Dr. McDougall and I are going to do a webinar just about oil. But nice. Well, then what I'll say, you know, what I could do is a webinar showing them how to cook without oil. Right, exactly. Of course, saute without oil. So here's the thing, guys. Let's just play devil's advocate. So let's say there was something, oh, she wants to get down. Okay. Let's say there was something healthful in oil that you needed or you feel your body needed. Wouldn't it also be in the whole food from which it came? So eat the olives, not the olive oil. Eat the flaxseed, not the flaxseed oil. Eat the avocado, not the avocado oil. So I'm not telling people not to eat fat if they're happy with their weight or, they, you know, they you can eat the whole food fat. That's the best fat to eat, not seeds and avocado. So you don't need oil. You need fat, and there's fat in all food already. So from a from a cooking standpoint, with the exception of frying, which we shouldn't do anyway, you I talk about this in my book on process, you don't need oil to cook. You don't need it to bake. You don't need it to saute. It's uh, the olive oil industry. It's a triumph of marketing over science like the dairy industry. But people watch television shows like Rachel Ray and Dr. Oz or these that new guy, and he's not a new guy, but Mark Hyman, the Fat Summit, and people are just saying how good EVOO is. And it's 4,000 calories a pound. We have, I think, close to 80% of people who are overweight, more than half of those are obese. Why would you take a population that's so overweight and give them the most calorically dense, nutritionally poor food on the planet? It's 4,000 calories a pound. <clears throat> you know, what's interesting, Gustavo, is most people agree that sugar is a junk food. Whether they eat it or not, I don't think anybody would say sugar is healthy for you. Sugar has no fiber and no nutrients. It's only 1,800 calories a pound. Oil is 4,000 calories a pound. A single tablespoon is 120 calories, 14 grams of fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. And the thing about oil is many people say, oh, it's so hard not to eat salt. Once you stop eating oil, not eating salt or not eating as much salt is easy because oil actually coats the taste buds of your tongue. And so you can't taste food now without using lots and lots of salt. So it's just, you know, culinary schools don't understand this. Restaurants certainly don't understand this. And people don't understand this because they watch cooking shows and the first thing they do is blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, your skin will clear up. Or the food will taste better without oil. You Eating oil, you just can't taste the food. And here's the thing. I'm a volume eater, and I want to be able to eat large portions of food. And if I ate oil, even if it were healthy, I would have to then limit my portions, you know? So it's not right, a good right. food. It's probably, no. you know, I, I, as much as I think people should not eat animal products, I mean, I think probably after dairy, oil is probably even worse than maybe having some 
animal products. I mean, at least in terms of caloric density, it's worse. That's for sure. Right, right. Is it true that uh, someone is asking or turned in a question, actually, um, if it's true that you don't eat rice anymore and why? Oh, I love rice. As a matter of fact, as soon as we're done here, I've got black rice. It just... I know. I brought you rice from Texas. No, I, I, do, I do eat rice. I mean, I, I love rice. I, I think it's easier to overeat on rice. There's something almost, I don't know if there's some opiates in there they snuck in, but I think grains are, they're, they're just, I don't know if they're more aromatic. Like potatoes, I eat a certain amount and I'm done. You know, with rice, it's it's just a little easier to keep going back, you know what I mean? Because it's in that big old rice cooker. But sure, I love rice, black rice, red rice, um, wild rice, which technically isn't rice. I do, I eat rice, I love rice, I put cold rice left over in my chopped salads. So yes, I, I absolutely eat rice and I love rice. And when I travel, as a matter of fact, I was just in the on a cruise, all I could get was white rice and I ate it and it was delicious, but I right. do prefer the darker ones better. Okay. Okay. Another question. Do you, do you, t I, I think I know the answer, but anyway, do you take any vitamins? I do take B12. I take the, I buy it at True North on their website. I believe it's the Metho Cope, the one with the Metho thousand milligrams. I take it every day because I'm the kind of person, if I don't do it every day, I'll just forget. So I take my thyroid medicine every day and I just take that. And yes, my B12 is high, but from what I understand, there's no downside to it. And that's the only vitamin I take. I would not necessarily be opposed to taking D if I was deficient. I get a physical once a year. I'm lucky to live in Southern California. I'm walking my dog 90 minutes a day. I, my vitamin D has always been good. So um, B, B12 is the only thing I take. That and thyroid uh -huh. medicine and that's it. Very good. Do you, um, okay, I, I love popcorn, and someone here asks about popcorn. I don't make it because I just, uh, I would probably overeat it, but how about um, air popcorn? Can you eat it, and is it, uh, do you still lose weight if you eat well, it? Well, okay, so, you know, it always, whether you can eat a particular food or not is going to depend what your goals are, and the thing is, you know, I, when I asked Dr. Goldhammer this question, he said that's a good food for people trying to gain weight. So the thing about air pop popcorn is, is you've taken one of the most important components out of the food, you've taken the water out. And when you take out the water, the fiber, or both, you increase your ability to overeat. The other problem is, is unless you're doing it, eating it the way my partner, John Pierre, says to eat it, which is with chopsticks, I don't advocate people, especially overweight people, especially people that are vulnerable towards food addiction, to do hand-to-mouth foods. It's just, just, that's just not a good thing. Right. That said, good, better, best. So if you're in a situation where you're starving or you're at the movies or you, if it's like air pop popcorn or French fries, it's, I'm not saying to never ever have air pop popcorn again. I stopped eating it. I used to eat it all the time, especially on airplanes. And then I broke a tooth and I will never eat popcorn again because <laughs> yeah. I am mad at popcorn. But, um, you know, that's the thing, you know, it's a filler food. I, it's, it's like, you know, I, my, one of the mottos in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program is if you're not hungry enough to eat vegetables, you're not hungry. Corn is technically a grain. It's 500 calories a pound. And when you think about how many ears of fresh corn you could eat as opposed to air pop popcorn, I think it's always better to eat the whole food if your goal is weight loss. Now, if you have a kid, if you're if you're not worried about losing weight, there, I, I don't think it's a horrible food, you know, unless you're putting the oil and salt on it, even if it's air pop and right. you're making kettle corn, you know. So uh, here Sid uh, says something that I, I have also heard Dr. McDougall say many times that he would not prescribe vitamin D under absolutely any yeah. circumstances. What yeah. do you do? You no, agree I'm not with a that? doctor, and I, I think Dr. McDougall is probably right about most things or just about everything. But I am not. I, I think people need to decide for themselves, and I don't know enough about that. So I don't know what I would do if I was deficient. I know that when they do my blood test, that's one of the things. So I, I don't know. And um, that's that's going to be a personal decision. I don't mm -hmm. think people – here's the thing, though. I don't think people should be taking any vitamin supplements without knowing what they're supplementing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, don't just take D because to take it, like, at least know – that you're taking it because you know possibly you're deficient, but B12 is non-negotiable for 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 right. anybody following a plant-based diet. So, and my understanding is that that even people that eat meat still can have B12 deficiency, and mm -hmm. you don't want to risk something with neurological complications, something that that that's that cheap. You know, there are fortified foods like like plant milks and nutritional yeast that have B12, but I'm not sure you would be able to eat enough of those to get that. So it's just it's a very cheap and expensive 
uh, vitamin, you can get sublingual, you can mm-hmm. get, you know, people do patches and drops, whatever works for you. So I, yeah, I don't, I'm not disagreeing with Dr. McDougall. I, I, I don't know, you know, because there's other plant-based doctors that I also admire that are like, well, maybe you're supposed to. So, you know, I, I, I'm thinking, you know, he's probably right. I mean, right. never, right. I've never, he's never steered me wrong in anything, but, um, okay. All right. Yeah. So how do you uh, determine the healthy way to be? Do you think that using the BMI index calculator is a good yeah. way? I think the best way is um, there's something called the BIA, Bio Impedance Analysis. And I think that is the only, and I actually had that done twice by Dr. Carrie Saunders. She's a plant-based doctor. Her website is drfood.org. She's involved with the plant-based nutrition support group in Detroit, Michigan, where Joel Kahn uh, practices. And it, it, you know, when people step on the scale, it's so funny, Gustavo, because they're like, they go, well, I, you know, I ate a potato and I gained four pounds. Really? You know, it, you have to eat an additional 3,500 calories to gain a pound of fat. So if you step on the scale because you ate a potato and gained four pounds, that means you would have had to eat 14,000 calories of potatoes, which I don't think is possible. They're 14,000 uh-huh. calories a pound. And so when you step on a scale, it doesn't tell you what you're weighing. Are you weighing muscle or bone or water? But this device, which is done through electrodes, gives you a complete printout of exactly what your weight is. How much is fat? How much is water? How much is bone? And so that, I think, is the most accurate thing. And I'm sure that if you Google it, you could find a doctor or a hospital or a company near you to get that. And so that that is what I would go by. But I would also go by, you know, can you pinch more than an inch? Do you, how do you feel? Are your <laughs> right. eyes rubbed together? I mean, you know, you know, here's the thing. You know, what I read recently is that we consider what – is around us as normal. And now because almost 80% of people are overweight, they're saying that people that are morbidly obese only consider themselves to be obese. And that people that are obese now only consider themselves to be overweight. And people that are overweight now consider themselves normal because there's more overweight people than ever. So people like me that are what I think is a normal weight, we are too thin now. You know, people are always telling me, oh, you're too thin, you're anorexic, I can snap you like a twig. And I think it's because there's so few people that are of normal body weight now. So, you know, how do you know if you're overweight? Well, I think, mm-hmm. you know, um, but I, I go, but I don't go by the visual. You know, how do you feel? How do your clothes feel? How How is your energy? You know, so I wouldn't worry so much about that. I worry about what the food you are eating and, and more than, than the, you know, we, we so visual and we're so obsessed with a number that means nothing. Also, you know, when you start lifting weights, which is something I'm going to start doing, I'm going to be gaining weight, but I'm not going to be gaining fat. So, so I think having a, a, the BIA done is, is a really good way to go to see, you know, because, you know, obviously if you had that done and you're 50% fat, you probably need to mm-hmm. lose some fat because that's what people want to lose is fat. They, you know, they say, I want to lose weight. No, you can cut up your leg and you'll lose weight. You want to lose fat and you want to increase muscle and, and, right. you know. Okay, uh, Chef Ajay, we, we'll try to put one or maybe two more questions because we're about to reach an hour. Oh, and, so um, but I do want to announce something for everybody that is very important. Um, I have seen that so many of you turned in questions about exactly what do you eat for breakfast and for lunch and for dinner and for snacks and uh, would you provide ideas of uh, easy meals and sauces to to cook at home so i have asked chef aj to put out another webinar a separate webinar that um i've put together with her for march 20th and i'm going to put here for you all a link that you can see right now this is a webinar where Chef AJ is going to show you about seven or eight uh, yeah. really quick and easy recipes for uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and some snacks. Uh, to put this kind of webinar, it takes a lot of time and effort. And, and uh, so we are charging a very small uh, fee for this webinar. But I think that you all will enjoy it a lot. And I want to put here what it looks like. That way you will know um, that it, it looks like this. And if you decide that you want to um, sign up for this webinar, make sure that you follow the directions there for the um, uh, registration because there is one crucial part right here uh, where it says step one and step two. 
so that the registration process goes smoothly with you. If for some reason it doesn't, feel free to contact me and uh, I can help you. My um, Let me take this out right now. Uh, my email is uh, mm -hmm. gustavo at gustavotolosa.com or bornforhealth at um, gmail.com. All right, so that is the webinar. It's going to be put on the Facebook page later on, and you should receive an email. Also, this webinar is being recorded, so everybody will get a link uh, with this webinar. Okay. I'm trying. I I, I'm, I, I want to look at you guys, but I, I love reading <laughs> these questions. And I, I love this. What if you drank a full glass of water with the popcorn? I have to say that that is an adorable question. The thing is, is the water has no satiety. And so the thing is, is water in food has satiety. Like when it's in the fruits and vegetables, when it's in the calorie dilute soups, but in and of itself, it exits the digestive tract too quickly. So you can't really rehydrate air pop popcorn, but that's a very right. right. Question, so you know? a lot of people are asking, when is your new book coming out? <laughs> Oh, it's so close to being written. It's not a book, guys. I know. I know that is what I need to do more than anything. Yes, it's. I don't know why. We need that book. We. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, Gustavo, guys. We're hoping Gustavo is just. He's a gem, isn't he? You guys. I was so blessed to meet him September 11th at the at the last Google Advanced Study Week. On which, by the way, if you have not seen my talk, it is now available free on Dr. McDougall's website. I really oh, yeah. encourage you, especially if you're somebody that has ever struggled with your weight, to watch that talk and maybe we can even provide a link for it for them. But Gustavo is going to be in Marshall, Texas on April 1st through 3rd at the Health Fest put on by former Mayor Ed Smith and Amanda Smith. And we're hoping to maybe do one of these live ones from the kitchen of the mayor's of the mayoral mansion. And so that will be really fun. And if, you, if you're in Texas or anywhere willing to travel, that's a really wonderful event. Dr. Campbell will be speaking and Dr. Greger and Dr. Barnard and myself. And it's it's cooking and it's lectures and it's it's really reasonably priced and it's very, very fun. Oh yes, and and please know that if we didn't answer your question tonight, which we uh, there's no way we could have fit all of them, uh, yeah. we will we will we'll do another them. we'll do one another next month. We'll save them, and and you will be able to submit your questions again. So we'll just keep going like that. Any other thing before we uh, say goodbye? Yeah, just, uh, I, I noticed that uh, uh, Kaylin, I hope I'm pronouncing her name wrong. Um, I, I noticed she's been typing, talking about these products. And again, I'm not, I don't take any commission for any product that I recommend, even the Instant Pot. I refuse my commission checks. I only say things that I really find value in. I wish you could just smell this one called Peachy Keen because it's just her. I just want to eat her products. They're made with food. It smells so good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you, everybody, for logging in. And in a little while, you will be receiving a um, link so that you can watch this webinar as many times as you want and see the beautiful AJ here on the screen. <laughs> and eat your vegetables, guys. That is the number one secret to beautiful skin and beautiful insides and losing sure. weight. Eat your vegetables. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Gustavo. Thanks for All watching, right. everybody. Okay, bye-bye, everyone. Bye.